Oh, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with just another fan TV, man. Uh, so the Raiders wrap up their season, finished officially 10-8 and eight on the year after losing last night 24-17 to the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I'm sorry if the video's a little dark. I'm going to try to uh, fix it. Hopefully it comes out better. But, um, you know, we're going to talk about serious shit here, talk about the thoughts of the game, right? Now, <laughs> I, I, I told myself going into this game I wasn't going to be upset if they lose. You know, it was expected, things like that, you know. Whatever, but the Ravens, in the manner that they lost, managed to find a way to upset me, right? This game, I'm not even going to talk bad about any of the players. I'm, I, I'm not, because the players did what they were supposed to do. They were failed once again by coaching. They were failed by, I did a video on it, their fatal flaw, red zone offense, right? You know, you can check the video out. I, I, I talked about it. If they don't correct it, it's going to cost them, and that cost them, right? The Ravens were... Inside the five yard line three times and scored one touchdown. Okay? Inside the five yard line. Not, not just inside the twenty, inside the five. Three times scored scored one touchdown. Okay. Um so first of all, let, let's let's talk about the defense. Let's talk about defense, okay? The defense gave up 17 points, right? I know the the score is 24 17, but the defense gave up one uh they give up one of those touchdowns, obviously, okay. All right, so defense gives up 17 points versus the Bengals. High flying offense. The the Bengals pretty much struggled to get anything going deeper down the field. All, a lot of short passes for them. Um, the only person that was really getting off was Jamar Chase because he's he's strong after the catch, you know, things like that. The Ravens were so terrified of Jamar Chase going deep on them that they let him have everything underneath, and, and he ate. He ate underneath, you know what I mean? Jamar Chase finished with 12 targets, 9 catches, 84 yards, 1 touchdown. So really good playoff game from Jamar Chase, right? But I was I I love how defense played. Marcus Peters was on. He was right on the edge. I, I call it controlled attitude. He was right. On, now he got one dumb penalty. He did, but after that he was right on the edge. Okay, he he, he was tough. He was in their face. Let them know it wasn't going to be nothing sweet over here. And I love that. Um, the defensive line took advantage of the fact that this Bengals offensive line is decimated. All right, Odafi Owe probably had his best game of the year. He was incredible last night. All right. Um, Justin Houston was back there. Calais Campbell had got some pressure early. Tyus Bowser got at least a sack and a half. Let me see. So they carried him. Okay, they carried Tyus Bowser with just one sack. But still, he was back there. So the defense did their part, right? They held the Bengals' office to 17 points. They did their part, right? They did their part. You know, um... Nine points in the first half, eight points in the second half. That's what the defense held this high-flying Bengals offense to. I can't ask for much more than that, all right? Um, now, offensively, this is what I want to talk about. Tyler Huntley had his best game of the season. So, shout out to Tyler Huntley. He took a lot of flat, for me included, a lot of Ravens fans. But he balled out last night, and him and the rest of his offense was let down by the coaching staff, okay? So, we all know the term innocent bystander, right? All right? This is the new term for John Harbaugh. He's a guilty bystander, right? He's a spectator. He's a fan. He watches things happen and doesn't correct them as a coach. All right. Now, John Harbaugh was quick to say in the in the post game press conference that, yeah, you know, it was Tyler Huntley's uh, executive decision to go over the top, right? Now, Tyler Huntley was wrong for that. Okay, he shouldn't have went over the top. You were way too far from the end zone to go over the top and try to put the ball to break the plane. You're way too far from that. All right. He was wrong for that. But John Harbaugh, your offensive coordinator, has two running backs in a run heavy scheme. Gus Edwards played 21 snaps last night. J.K. Dobbins played 34 snaps last night out of 69 offensive plays. Right. So Gus Edwards is down there in the what, 20, 20 percent, 30 percent. J.K. Dobbins is, is almost at half. He should be way more than that. That that possession. It was play action flat to Patrick Ricard, tipped the line of scrimmage, okay? Then they ran the ball. Didn't get anywhere there. Fine. Gus Edwards looked like he almost kind of uh, broke off the right side, all right? The third play is the fumble that changes the entire game and pretty much ends the game. It was That fumble happened with 11 minutes left on the clock, but the game was over with. You know, that's, that's the kind of play that takes your heart. So the Ravens are inside the five-yard line. I mentioned this earlier. They scored one touchdown. And guess who scored the touchdown? J.K. Dobbins. And guess who didn't get a single carry inside the five-yard line the entire game? J.K. Dobbins. 
Greg Roman, John Harbaugh collectively had these players out there playing their heart out just to cost them the game. Like I said, Tyler Huntley shouldn't have went over the top. He doesn't get his all from blame for that. But the play was, John Harbaugh said the play was, the play was the QB sneak, push the quarterback into the end zone. That, that was the play call. That's the wrong play call. Gus Edwards is here. Patrick Ricard is here to block, right? He's a 300-pound fullback. Why else is he here? Why else is he here? Put the ball in Gus's belly. Put the ball in J.K.'s gut. Let him get into the end zone. At worst, they don't get it. You kick a field goal, it's 20 to 17. Now this defense who, who has been playing well, who's been playing pretty much lights out, gave him one drive in the second half. Besides that, they was forcing three and outs. There was there was a play, there was a series on the defense where they forced a three and out. Geno Stone gets a penalty on roughing the kicker. I'm not mad at Geno Stone. He was trying to make a play. And really, he almost got the ball and he he hit the kicker on the way down. It wasn't even like he ran into him. But it was a soft call, but it is, it is the right call. It was the right call. Okay. Bengals get the ball back. New set of downs. Ravens force another three and out. This defense was balling last night. Kyle Hamilton. I, I wanted to mention Kyle Hamilton. I'm sorry. People use the term, somebody's a missile to the football a lot, right? Kyle Hamilton is a missile to the football, for real. There was a lot of flack about him going 14, the Ravens, and the early in the season performances versus the Dolphins. People couldn't get that one play out of, his, out of their head with Tyreek Hill was running past them. Tyreek Hill runs past a lot of people, all right? He's a rookie. He didn't play much cover three at Notre Dame. He admitted that. Ravens stopped doing that to him. He balled out. And he was well worth the selection. His growth over this entire season has been beautiful to watch. Can't wait to see what Kyle Hamilton got for us next season. All right. Now, back to this offense and being failed. The offense was failed by the coaching staff. Absolutely failed by this coaching staff. Okay. Now, let's go to the final drive of the game. Ravens are driving. They're putting some things together. Okay. Now, they get a first down just inside the 20. I think it's about maybe 18-yard line with a minute left. The Ravens don't snap the ball again to about 30 seconds. Now you could now people are gonna tell me the Ravens were just draining the clock. They didn't want to get they didn't want the uh, Bengals to get the ball back. Bengals had all their timeouts, they can kick three. All that makes sense. Except for the fact that you're a bad offense. You're a bad passing offense. By draining the clock, you now take away your ability to run the football. You can't do it now, right? That's bad clock management, and that's on the guilty bystander, John Harbaugh. Who let the play clock continue when the rave? If okay, look, put it like the Ravens had two timeouts right there. If you're not going to call a timeout after getting the first down with a minute left, go hurry up, get a get another playoff. Now they get the penalty on Zeitler. You know, tough call for him. You know, there was a hold. Now they got to be in the worst possible position for the Ravens football team. They got to pick up 20 yards in two plays. That's not what they do. Ends up being a hell Mary. James Prochet almost catches the ball. Whatever. I don't, I don't really care about that. People are gonna say, oh, he was so close. It shouldn't have had to come down to that. It should not have to come, come, come down to that. J.K. Dobbins has never had a game with more than 17 carries. Never. This game, J.K. Dobbins had 13 carries for 62 yards. That's five yards a carry. Gus Edwards had 12 for 39, only 3.3, but he was more of a bruiser. Tyler Huntley had that long 54-yard uh, run. I mean, sorry, long 35-yard run. So he had nine carries, 54 yards. So most of that came on that one run, really. All right. Let's go through the stats real quick. And I'm going to tell you, that this, this, is, this is how the Ravens coaching staff failed this team. Tyler Huntley threw for 229 yards after having a rough start to the game with an interception, okay? Joe Burrow threw for 209. J.K. Dobbins ran for 62 yards. Joe Mixon ran for 39, okay? All right? Mark Andrews had his best playoff game. He had 73 yards receiving, um, which was second in this game. Jamar Chase led all receivers, well, all pass catchers in this game with 84 yards. The Ravens outplayed the Bengals. They outplayed the Bengals and were let down by the coaching staff. Simple as that. I don't want to hear anything else about it. All right. J.K. went as far to call out Greg Roman at the end in his post-game press conference. Now, he didn't mention him by name, but he's the only person he could be talking about. He said, I'm sick and tired of playing these games, and I only get... 12, 13 carries. It's the playoffs. Why am I not getting more carries? He said Tyler Huntley shouldn't even have been in that position to fumble uh, at the red zone because they should have given me the ball. You got a player that's calling for the game to be on his shoulders. You, he's calling for it. 
He's asking. He's begging for it. Put the game on my back. And y'all let him down again. Y'all let him down again. Right? Now, it's really easy to pile on Greg Roman. It is. He should not be the Ravens offensive coordinator. He should be gone. Let go. He should have been. That should have been two years ago. But here we are. He should be kaputs. He should be out of here. Right? But John Harbaugh. You sat back once again and you let all these things occur. I don't care about your motivational speeches. I don't care nothing about it. When it comes to in the game, you and me do the same thing. We watch. You don't coach nobody. You don't jump in. You don't say, hey, should we be doing this more? After every game, we got to hear about, yeah, you know, we should have got some sort of ball more. You're right. Yeah, you're right. How about this? Isaiah Likely had the best game of his career last week. Eight catches, 103. Do you know how many snaps he played out of 69 last night? 26. He was out snapped by Josh Oliver. And I said this the entire season. Josh Oliver has played well this season. There's not nothing against Josh Oliver. Isaiah Likely should not be out snapped by Josh Oliver. But yet, once again, here we are. This team was, this team, the underdog, right, where, where the Ravens love to be, outplayed the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I'm sorry, there's no else I can say. I, I tried to sugarcoat it. They outplayed them. They were the better team last night, and they were failed. They were failed by coaching. At minimum, that game should have went to overtime, and we'll see what and we see how it plays out from there. At minimum, that game should have went to overtime. So that's the end of the Ravens season right there. A game, like I said, that I, I told myself I was not going to get angry about. I expected to lose this game, but the way in the in the manner in which they lost did not sit right with me. Um. So yeah, man. So listen. Um. On this channel, I know this is a Ravens channel. But I am going to talk about some of the other playoff games, you know, during the stretch. I am a football fan, you know what I mean? This this, this channel was for that. It was the Ravens season, so, you know, it became a Ravens channel, obviously. I, you know, and then when there's Ravens news, I'll talk about it. But, um, you know, hopefully you guys, you know, stick around with me. Don't unsubscribe. Don't, unsubscribe, you know, <laughs> don't do that. Um, still playing Ravens content coming, but we also will talk about the bigger NFL as a whole. Um, so, man, thanks for everybody watching and supporting. I started this channel in April, right after the draft, well, right during the draft. And it's a goal to 800 subscribers by, you know, January. It's a blessing. So I want to say thank everybody who subscribed to the channel. Uh, if you stayed this long in the video, I appreciate you. Um, leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me about your thoughts about the season, man. Um, thank you guys for everything. And um, I'm going to get up out of here, man. It's your boy, Gabriel. This is on the Fan TV. I'm out.